John was blown away. Oh, speaking of which, Marco was in grade school and uh, he was constantly having trouble. He, he talked too much and he did too much and he did this and he did that. So I was called in to see what the problem was. At that point in time, coincidentally, they were tearing down part of the building. So I walked into the principal's building. She was sitting there and I sat down. Behind her was this absolute ruin of the building. They were destroyed. And I said to her, oh, don't come on. Don't tell me he did that too. But just cracked her up. She says, no, this child is gifted. He's gifted beyond belief. He just, why well, he can't stand, sit, stand to sit still. And uh, we had to do something about that. But I got him enrolled in a program and then we were off to uh, Catalina Island on programs and Griffith Park on programs, learning, learning, learning. He, it was, you could not give this kid enough to learn. Whatever it was you fed him, he wanted no more. More, 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 quicker, quicker, quicker. It was just, it was terrific. And his brothers and sisters got into it too. Tony bit more to fashion and designing things, but she's as smart as a whip and her interest became more medical. Peter wound up in real estate going in that direction and Marco wound up in, with the military and very much scientific. But uh, the most amazing thing about my children was that they were so incredibly agile. Their minds were like quicksilver. I just sit there, roll my eyes and go, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and they would make the leaps between this and that and not in silliness, but in, in really good. There was a program a long time ago on National Public Radio called Connections. It was one of my favorite programs, and it was astonishing. And here I am with little ones, little tots, watching a, a National Public Radio program with Connections. And when the teacher said, well, what did you do? What did you watch? And I said, oh, me watch my baby, 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 and I need to talk about it. He said, oh, we watch Connection on NPR. The teachers go, what? <laughs> Oh, anyway, back to the guy from Griffith. My son comes home from school. This is just before he, I got called into the principal's office. It seemed that he had caused a major interruption in Mrs. Uh, whatever her name was, teacher, and uh, hit the classroom. Uh, he told her she was wrong. And uh, he, she said, how do you know it's wrong? Because he says, everything my mother's taught me doesn't agree with anything you've said, so I know you're wrong. <laughs> so, that's kind of embarrassing, so I got called in at that point in time. And uh, it seemed that what she had said, she had these children, one child stand in the center, and nine children walk around. So the child in the center was a son, nine children walking around with the planets. Well, of course, Pluto would have been booted out of the program today, but then it was still a program. And then she said, and this is how it works. To which my son said, no, that's not how it works. The sun is moving towards Alpha Lyra at 2.5 million miles per second, and you all have to move as a group to the northwest. <gasps> Whereupon the teacher looked at him like he was on drugs. And uh, he, she said, no, you're wrong. He said, no, I'm right and I will prove it. So he came home and uh, I knew he was right. I mean, we, we, we were working on the star charts, but who's going to believe a you know, high school graduate mother who works in aerospace putting insulation on wires and building downrange telemetry. I'm just another dumb housewife, you know, like whatever they have with the, this woman in the Second World War was. But anyway, Rosa the Riveter, I think she was. I'm sort of the equivalent of that, doing downrange telemetry for NASA. However, I did have a friend over at uh, Griffith Park Observatory. I got that professor to call the high school, excuse me, the grade school. This was, by the way, I think it was in sixth grade. Fifth or sixth grade, had to be because he was still in grade school and ask if he would be permitted to come in and talk to them. And uh, I said to Marco, I said, first of all, before this happens, you have to go in and apologize in front of the class for saying to the teacher that she was wrong. I said, if you're going to make a correction, you either do it in private, or you say, I have a difference of opinion I would like to bring to your attention. You do not tell your teacher you're wrong, that's disrespectful. So he had to do that. And then the teacher came in, and the entire school at Rio Vista sat there and listened while this teacher, this head astronomer from Griffith, came in and 
did a dissertation on how in fact the solar system is not static but does in fact move. I thought that was totally cool. <laughs> totally cool. It was the kind of shit I would have pulled off as a kid. And that's what was so neat about my kids because it was sort of watching me all over again. It was just hysterical. You knew what was coming. You just knew. You maybe didn't know exactly what was coming, but you knew something was coming down the pike. You just had to wait and find out what. Okay, turn that off for a second.